Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Cask and Q or Whiskey and Barbecue Meat. I'm your host, Justin Lloyd, and today it's flat iron steak. Stick around. It's a cold beer kind of the evening. Here's to you. All right, guys, so uh, we are here at the cutting board. We have a flat iron steak here. Um, one of the things I really love about this cut of beef is it's inexpensive, you know, relatively speaking. Um, it's got good marbling throughout. I don't know if you can see this on the camera. But there's some really good marbling in that cut. You can see all the striations. And what that means is flavor and moisture. So you'll probably notice there's some uh, silver skin there that probably just needs to go ahead and come off because that stuff can get kind of stringy and uh, nobody wants that. So let's get this guy out of there. Try to angle your knife up a little bit and that'll get underneath that silver skin. This uh, particular tendon right there does run pretty deep within the cut and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna butcher it up and go chasing that thing too much. So. Um, that looks pretty good on this side. There's some stragglers on this side. I'll, I'll knock that off. Again, you can spend a lot of time doing this or a little bit. Um, I'm just going to spend a little bit. Okay. I'm going to use uh, some balsamic vinegar as a binder for the rub today. I just think it adds a good flavor and extra dimension besides just using olive oil or something like that. Rub that on the steak. Well, that smells good already. Some friends of uh, mine back in college, we all lived together and we used to marinate steaks and this stuff. And just, I don't know how we found out about it, but man, it was really good. I don't do that much often anymore, but I think I might now that I'm thinking about it. Okay. There we go. That looks like a pretty good slather to me. So we'll go ahead and hit it with some salt, pepper, onion, and garlic. Trusty mix that I keep on hand. I want a pretty good crust on this steak, so I want to go pretty heavy on the rub. Mix it up a little more. Don't forget the other side. Okay, we're cooking on the gas grill tonight. It's like a pretty good seasoned steak to me. All right, we're gonna move on to the gas grill for uh, convenience tonight. All right, let's get this guy fired up. We're gonna do an indir indirect cook. So we'll leave the middle grate off, um, or I'm sorry, the middle burner, and we'll hit um, the two burners on the right and the two burners over here. I'm going to let that go till it's good and hot and uh, kind of burn off all the nasties and we'll be, we'll be back in just a moment. Very important to have a clean grill surface. If you ever hear anybody tell you that it's a seasoning and you don't want to clean your grill, uh, run away. Do not eat their food. There's no such thing as seasoning on a grill that's just been sitting out, not cleaned. Those little bits of <laughs> gunk, it's no good. I mean, that's not to say there's not such a thing as seasoning, like on a cast iron skillet or or something like that. I mean, that's that's different, but if you're just talking about nasty stuff that's sitting on top of the grill grates, don't let anybody tell you that seasoning. I wouldn't eat it, and you shouldn't either. Where 
you stand on temperature, and I like to put it in the thickest part of the steak. I'm going for a medium rare. Um, the other folks that are going to be eating, they'll probably eat from the thinner end, and that'll be more of a medium. But I always use those thermometers. Don't, you, don't ruin a piece of meat just because you're too proud. All right, let's see what we got here. We're at about 130 internal on the steak. I'm going to reverse here this bad boy. Man, I love that sizzle. And press down to get some better grill marks, just for presentation purposes. Give her a twist. Okay guys, so we're back at the cutting board. Sorry I couldn't show the second part of the sear. Um, my phone got too hot. I guess I had it too close to the grill and uh, it told me to shut it down. So that's what I did. And here we are at the cutting board. As you can see, there's a lot of juices uh, that came off this. It's been resting about five or six minutes. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and take it on inside, get it sliced up and see what we got. All right, so we've got some restless natives in the in the house so let's go ahead and slice into this guy this should be about a medium right here at the end and even the end man is just really really tender I'm trying to get that to focus for you there we go still juicy and tender Okay, well, let's go ahead and get this guy sliced up. Slicing against the grain, thin strips. When we pulled this, the inter internal temp was 135. So it may have carried over to 137, 138. The smell is great. So let's see what we got here, kind of in the middle. It looks really good to me. So we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of this sliced up and plated and we'll be back. Finished product, sprinkled with some uh, blue cheese crumbles and uh, drizzled with the remains of the juices from the steak and make this. Recipe and description. Thanks for stopping by Cask and Q for whiskey and barbecue meat. See you next time.